tell me a little bit about what does this market look like? You, you, you talked about the availability of the senior family housing as opposed to the communities. So we got a little bit of a glimpse of that. Um, but as far as the, the need and <laughs> where you're seeing this grow in comparison to communities and, and other markets and what that looks like over the next five, 10 years. So the federal government is able to say that we are um, short 600,000 um, 600, beds by 2050. And we are nowhere on track to ever hit that. So what's happening is the aging of our country, 10,000 people every day are turning 65, 4,500 are turning 85 every day. And it's the aging of our whole country that 70% of people in the country is going to need um, help. They are going to need this type of care. And it gives people the opportunity to look at and say, what would I want? Would I, if all things are equal, right? If you were able to pay 6,500 each month, would I prefer a hundred to 200 plus type building with a caregiver to 20 to 30 or a awesome, an awesome cozy home that has 10 to 20 people with a caregiver every five to eight people? Mm -hmm. That is drastically different. Previously, people didn't think they had the option. What's happening is COVID exposed problems in the healthcare of Dramatically. the country. And what yeah. happened is, is when families are taking their parents home because they're terrified that in a 200 bed building, COVID's going from person to person to person to person and killing 42% of people that were able to pass from COVID were in those type of buildings. Mm -hmm. It demonstrated the biggest problem with the industry. So for the first time in a long time, the the bigger competitors got a black eye because they were all over the front page of the paper. What comes out of that is that the country is aware that that might not be the best option for their family, but they don't get that there's any other options. So I'll bet you if you would poll everyone that is on, that is able to hear this right now, 98 of out of probably um, 100 people that are on this haven't ever heard of a home that cares for um, seniors. And that's why I do 25 to 30 of these each year, because I'm trying to teach people that there are other options out there, that there's an other part of the industry, which happens to be the top performing asset class from 2005 through 2015, outperforming a apartment buildings, industrial, office, and all those things that people talk on all the time, but it, they outperform them by over 5%. Now, I chose that time frame purpose. Uh, I chose that time frame purposely because with the 2008 crash, right? I was trying to find out what asset class can handle when things go tough, when things aren't very good. Because when all things are good, everything tends to do pretty well. We're at a phase right now, we're in the first quarter of 2023 and people are afraid. They are terrified that they don't um, know where to put their money. And, and if they don't, you've got inflation that's eating it up at eight plus each year anyway. So it's creating an, an, an atmosphere that folks really need to uh, realize that there are other opportunities out there that you could get in that have um, assets underneath it and have a health care piece to it that is always going to be there because of the aging of our whole country for the upcoming 10, 20, 30 plus years. There, there's going to be lots of opportunities to basically take what happened the, the past two years and fix it so it doesn't happen again, where if it does happen, the care is offered in homes that there's 10 to about 20 people. And we can have an in-home care person that doesn't um, leave. You can contain it. it. It's possible, but you can't do it in 100 to 200 plus beds. Yeah. So these in-home care so, um, uh, nurses, if you will, uh, or representatives, um, they live there too, right? Or, or they're, they they're on don't. Shifts? They they are t they are on current they are currently on eight hours, but yeah. what what we would figure out 
uh, post COVID that what we would do different is we would actually build out housing in the homes just in case that ever happened over. Where they so, need to stay overnight. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because what happened is the other places did not close down and they had people going in and out, in and out, in and out. And that's what caused people to die. Yeah. Yeah. And we have plans in place where if this ever happened over, we would do things differently, but we didn't have anybody pass in any of our homes from COVID the entire time. Not every other place is able to say that. That's what was different on what we were able to do than every other place that's out there. And you were, you, so you were doing this before COVID. I was doing this before COVID for um, years. Yes. Okay. Um, we got into doing the industry back in 2014 and I was jumping up and down telling everybody, but it felt like they didn't really get what I was doing because they felt that the other option was was oh, was fine enough that they didn't have any issues with it. And until COVID happened, and then everyone's like, oh, you were able to do homes? What a good idea. And I'm like, I've been doing it for eight years and you didn't hear me the whole time? But like, Is that other investors or um, just like other potential customers or clients? Yeah, I'm thinking like other families in the area. Okay. okay. Um, families in the area that are choosing between options yeah. uh, to put their own family where yeah. we don't typically have a, we don't have anything out front of any of our homes that, that it's easy to find what we do, but that, mm -hmm. that is purposely done. We don't want to have tons of people going in and out of these homes when we can have a building um, with the ads out front, we just aren't really doing that. We mm -hmm. have it where these are homes for people that are in these homes and we don't like advertise to get people to come in there. Mm -hmm. So from the curb, like the up. curb appeal, this is just a, a typical home um, yeah. that, that would, would be hard to distinguish from any other home. Um, it's yeah. just through word of mouth or maybe just online marketing that that's how you're getting traffic. Yeah. What we do actually is we partner up with so like local hospitals that discharge people out every day. Mm -hmm. And what happens is when they are able to discharge them out, the hospital doesn't get paid if they come back to the hospital within 30 days. So what happens is when they discharge uh, Medicare? The hospital, um, uh, through that and so in so it so insurance. The uh, how they I didn't know that, yeah, it's really interesting. So, what happens is, and you know, that's got to which it shouldn't, but that's got to play into level of care, especially among chronic visitors. Um, I know, I know this firsthand with family. Um, it, it, it can be very frustrating with, yeah. the, with the lack of care, um, you know, you know, in those kind of situations where they're in and out all the time, yeah. So, just so we had a uh, um, local um, hospital, right, where they were getting 45% of their people to come back to the hospital within 30, uh, within 30 days. Mm -hmm. This picture, if you didn't get, if they would not pay you on 45% of the people, where if we can take awesome care in our homes and we are able to cut that down to 10 to 15%, we just added an extra 30% of income that they couldn't have earned anywhere else. Yeah. That's what we do is different. And we don't really have to advertise as much. We will partner with health care in the area because we help them earn extra money. Yeah. When you talk to them on them earning extra money, they will have that talk easier than if you are trying to advertise where we don't really have to do that. 